I want to start out by saying that the Word of God is the absolute authority on every issue in life. Every issue in life. And the Bible speaks to this particular issue. And uh, I'll be talking about several things and just life situations uh, and going through there. Uh, but folks, life is precious to God. Life is precious to God. And the Bible is clear uh, you know, on the sanctity of life. Uh, we, as uh, Southern Baptists, believe that abortion is wrong. Uh, all lives are important to God. We are pro-life and we are pro-God. All right, folks, God is the one who decides. And uh, in some instances, uh, I know uh, people get very, very upset on this issue, uh, but what I have learned as a minister of the gospel, my job is not to be politically correct. My job is to be biblically correct. So we need to do what the Word of God says. And I want to say even uh, in a crowd this size, uh, I'm sure there uh, is a woman or a woman that have younger in life made that choice. But I also want to say there is forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Okay, the only unpardonable sin is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, uh, which will not be forgiven us, forgiven. But everyone, folks, God loves everyone, and there's forgiveness there. And I don't want you know you to feel like an outcast today. God loves you. We love you. But we're simply saying, uh, man, life is so important, and there's so so many other things that you can do. Uh, you know, I've been asked before, you know, even in my ministry, not here, but in other places, uh, they would be doing some prenatal testing, and it would be a uh, possibly, possibility of a Down syndrome. And folks, I'm telling you, uh, you know what I'm fixing to say, Steve, we visit a Down syndrome uh, man every uh, month. And uh, he is now 73 years old, which is very unusual. His name is Donnie Norris, and I'm telling you, he's our buddy. When we come in and we talk to him, he can carry on a conversation. And folks, I'm just telling you, uh, you know, we, we have to give everything to the Lord. And there's other things. And the other thing, my heart goes out to, to ladies that cannot have children. Okay, and, and here's where this all works out, folks. Adoption is so, so important. Uh, there's something in a, a woman. God puts that mother nature, that mother in them, and, and those characteristics. And if you can't have children, would you consider adopting children? I think that would be a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. Well, today we're, we want to go to the Word of God and the sanctity of life. If you have a bulletin and you want to follow along there, we have several scriptures that I want us to see. And also, I added some scriptures. Uh, we turn our bulletin in, in on Thursday, but on Saturday nights I still go over my sermon one more time, and uh, the Lord gave me a couple of other scriptures He wants me to use today. Let me give you the outline today. Number one, the source of life. The source of life. Number two, the sanctity of life. The sanctity of life. And number three, the significance of life. The significance of life. Let's look at the source of life in Genesis 1-1. Most of you won't, you don't even have to turn there, okay? Genesis 1-1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Folks, God created everything that you see. Everything that you see. I, we, we don't believe in evolution. We believe in creation. We believe God started everything. And in the first chapter of Genesis, you see everything that God has created. Now go to, with me to Genesis 1.26. Genesis 1.26. God is the source of life. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. We are the image of God, all right? We are not little gods. 
We are his children, okay? We are his creation, and we're going to share that with you here in just a few minutes in another uh, scripture. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. And he's talking about mankind, Okay, we we are uh, we are man. We are woman. We were made special by God. We are not like the animals. All right, we didn't come from monkeys. We didn't come from a pond, folks. We have come from God, and we will show you this as we go through. And then verse twenty-seven. So God created man in His own image. He says it again. Folks, it's not that we are God or we are, you know, in many ways not like God. But we have the capacity to think. We have the capacity to choose. We have the capacity that that animals and other things do not have. And in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created. And folks, we know the difference between males and females. In verse 28, then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. What is he saying? He is saying, uh, you know, his plan was to repopulate the earth. And we do this through our children, folks. We do this through our children. Fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on earth. So God is the source of life. God spoke this world into existence. God created mankind. And with God, his plan was for man to replenish the earth. And and folks, that is a good, good Thing. Now look down in verse uh, 21. In verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken from man. I've always asked myself, I wonder what Adam said when he first saw woman. Well, I can tell you what he said. He said, whoa, man. (laughs) All right? He was by himself. He was naming animals. He was doing all this. But I'm telling you, men, and and again, folks, we're talking about Valentine's Day here too. I'm going to help you out. Valentine's tomorrow, okay? (laughs) Tomorrow, I'm going to help you. And when he brought Eve, woman to man, I am telling you, it was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing. Now look at verse 24. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his, life, to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Folks, they become one mentally, emotionally, and physically. And physically. Folks, children are truly a blessing from the Lord. And look at verse 25. And they both were naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They were not ashamed. So we know God is the source of life. God created man and then God created woman. And he created them to have a special, intimate relationship with one another. James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verse 7. Go with me if you would. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Folks, God does not make mistakes. He does not make mistakes. Every child, every baby, every conception. And by the way, I know you know this, and I meant to say it earlier, life begins at conception. Okay? When that sperm and that egg, I'm not trying to give a science lesson here, but when they meet, folks, 
It is a created being. And we should honor God's will. And, and we should honor that in everything that we do. Now look in verse 7. Back in verse 7. The Bible says, And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Folks, I'm telling you, it is God that gives life. It is God. And I, I, I've been at birth, okay, at birth, and I was in the room, and uh, uh, again, you know, the old thing of hitting them on the bottom, and then, you know, that's not true <laughs> in all cases. But I'm telling you, when they take that first breath, all right, that, that begins life on earth. But I'm telling you, they are already a human being when uh, they are conceived. So we know that uh, God is the source of life, and life starts at uh, conception. The second thing I want you to see, not only the source of life, but the sanctity of life, the sanctity of life. Look in Jeremiah. We're going to look at two examples. Look in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1. The Bible says in Jeremiah 1, verse 5, Before I formed you, well, actually, verse 4, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Folks, you have to understand the sovereignty of God. Okay, he knows everything about you before you were born. He knew the date of your birth. He knows the date of your death. That is the sovereignty of God. That's why, you know, we can't predict these things. No one knows how long they're going to live. But God knows. He formed us it knew us in the womb. Before uh, you were born, I sanctified you. Sanctified means set apart. Okay? He has a plan for everyone. Everyone that has been born, everyone that has been conceived, he has a plan. And here he tells Jeremiah his plan, I ordained you a prophet unto all nations. A prophet. Before he was born, he knew Jeremiah. Before he was in the womb, he knew what Jeremiah was going to do. And folks, that is a sovereign God. Now look at uh, Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1 with me. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. How did he know us? Before the foundation of the world. You were not an accident. You are not a mistake. God gave you life. God knew you were coming. God knew that conception was going to happen. And later on, we will see how special that is, folks. It is special. Children are a blessing from God. Look with me at Judges. Judges, chapter 13. I want you to see Judges. Another example Judges 13, verse 1. And again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. And we know all through uh, Israel's history, they would do that. They would serve God and do right, and then they would do wrong and be into captivity. Matter of fact, seven different times they were in captivity. Now, verse 2, now there was a certain man from Zorah, the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said unto her, Indeed now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Folks, I am telling you, ladies, never 
give up. My Bible says all things are possible with God. You think of Abraham and Sarah. There's examples in the Word of God. Verse 4, now therefore be careful not to drink, uh, want, uh, drink wine or similar drink, not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, no razor shall come to his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite uh, to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. Now look at verse 24. Verse 24, so the woman bore a son, and they called his name Samson. What was Samson's purpose? I mean, his mom could not bear children. But God had a plan, a specific plan for Samson. God opened his, his mother's womb. And they, Samson, was going to free uh, Israel uh, from the Philistines. And the Bible says, And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him, and the Spirit of the Lord became to move upon him. Matter of fact, that is exactly what happened with Jesus and John the Baptist. Look at Luke chapter 1 with me. Luke chapter 1. I love this part. Mary goes and they're both conceived, you know, conception. They, they, they are both pregnant, excuse me. And Mary visits Elizabeth in verse 39. Now Mary arose in those days and went to the hill country with haste to a city of Judah, and entered the house of Zacharias, and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. What was Elizabeth doing, folks? She was carrying John the Baptist. I'm telling you, from conception, folks, God had a special plan. John the Baptist would be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Then in verse 32, Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And again, talking about John the Baptist, talking about Jesus. But why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb. And the Bible says, Blessed is she who believed, for there will be fulfillment of those things which are told for her. And folks, what is so important about Jesus Christ, we are talking about a virgin birth. A virgin birth. Joseph was not the biological father of Jesus. That's what made him the perfect son of God. God placed Jesus in the womb. He was that special baby, that special one. So we see here two instances of the baby leaping in the womb. That baby is alive. That baby is a real being. That baby in the womb is precious to God. Folks, I'm just telling you, the sanctity of life is so important. And I'd like to try to answer one other hard question, and that is, is there any reason to abort a child? And I know in my heart goes out to these two situations. It happens. It is life. Uh, it is, and, and I'm telling you, it's because of the fall of mankind, okay? When we fell, sin came a part of this world. And the, the question is rape or incest. And folks, again, as I said to those uh, mothers, or, you, know, you know, it's so important because of adoption. There are still things we can do to avoid that. And I know, uh, ladies, it would be one of the hardest things for you to do it all. Do it, do. But you have to understand, it is a life. Even though you, there was no plans for it, and it seems totally unfair, I'm telling you, that life is precious to God. And God can give you the grace. And folks, there are testimonies. 
I've read testimonies that this has happened to, to ladies. And, and folks, they have overcome that. And uh, I know one testimony in particular that, uh, that I had read that where even in that, the, the, the son that was born eventually uh, became a preacher. So you have to understand, God can take something bad and make things good. So life begins with God. Sanctity life is protecting the unborn. It's speaking up for them. And folks, the last thing I want you to see in our message today is the significance of life. The significance of life. Look in Psalms 139 with me. Psalm 139. Jody quoted part of this. Psalm 139, verse 13. For you form my inward parts. Folks, God knew what he was doing. It is amazing what he has done. Think about how many times your heart beats. Think about how many times uh, you breathe. God knows exactly where you are and, and He knows everything that you need. He knows everything about you. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Folks, every child is special to God. Every kid is special to God. Every kid was handmade. Every kid has a purpose in life. And, and folks, God doesn't make mistakes. He made you just the way He wanted you. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. Let me tell you this also. You grandparents know exactly what I'm fixing to say. Man, I love uh, Sarah Jane and Jonathan. You know, I was present for both those births. I was, you know, we raised them and we loved them. But they're just something about grandchildren. It's, it's, it's a different kind of thing, okay? I would do anything. I would do anything for my children. But I'm just telling you, uh, uh, you talk about moving heaven and earth for our grandchildren. They're just something different about them. They are extra special. And, and God knows that. Verse 15, my frame was not hidden from you, my frame. And when I was made in secret and skillfully brought in the lowest part of the earth, you have to realize, folks, Adam was made from dust. It was created from dust. And even in life, in life's a cycle that we have, we will return to dust. And you stay in the ground long enough, folks, you're going to be dust. You really will, according to the Word of God. Now here's the part that's special. Look at verse 16. Your eyes saw my substances, substance being yet unformed, and in your book they were all written. Folks, we all have a special DNA. We all have genetics, and everyone is different. So God handmade you. God made you special. And we as parents and grandparents need to always tell our children and grandchildren how special they are. Folks, they are a gift from God. And the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. Folks, I'm telling you, God created everyone special. Everyone is special to God. And then Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. Look at verse 8. And we know this, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Folks, I am telling you, when it comes to children, when conception begins, we should begin praying for that child's salvation. Salvation is the greatest 
gift that we can give our children and our grandchildren. Salvation is why we are here today. Salvation is why Jesus died on the cross. And I know sometimes even at their birthdays, I mean, it is amazing how many, that first birthday, that second birthday, that third one, I mean, the gifts are on the table. They're everywhere. And there's nothing wrong with showering our children with gifts. But the greatest gift of all is the gift of salvation. That's why, folks, we need to keep our children in church. We need to pray for our kids' salvation. Now look at verse 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. What is, he, the, what is that saying? God has a plan for everyone. God has a plan. God created you for a reason. Only you, only you can do that. What, what God has created you to be. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Oh, folks, what is neat is how important children are to us. I hope you understand our kids sit over here and when they go out, you know, I do the same thing. I watch them go out when I'm coming up here every... And you know what I sit there and think? I think, I'm wondering if there's a preacher in that bunch. I'm wondering if there's a Sunday school teacher in that bunch. Folks, we have the responsibility to raise our children in the admonition of the Lord. We need to invest in our children. I cannot tell you how important our nursery is to our church. I cannot tell you how important our children's ministry is to our church. I cannot tell you how important youth ministry is to our church. And I know some of you are thinking, well, what about us? Folks, everybody's important, but our job as adults is to support these ministries and do everything we can to help them grow in the Lord and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. The last scripture I want to share with you is Psalm 127. Psalm 127. Psalm 127, verse 3. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. And folks, I'm telling you, heritage is so important. It's just like my parents. I thank God that they went to church. I thank God that they got saved. And I thank God I grew up in a Christian home. Okay? Every time, I'm talking as far back as I can remember, every Sunday morning we went to church. Every Sunday night, church training. Anybody remember that? Anybody remember Sunbeams, RAs, and GAs? All these programs my, my parents took us to. Even on Wednesday nights, we went to church. And the Bible says, the fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Oh, folks, we are replenishing the earth with the fruit of our womb. And I look at my grandchildren and I just think, man, I wonder what they're going to become. Last week, Kylie was in the nursery my two-year-old granddaughter. I don't know, there's something, I love Keegan very, very much, but Kylie and I have made some kind of connection I can't really explain. And she walked by the monitor there where Lori's uh, office is there, and she saw me on the television. And she said, Papa. And, and Lori, yeah, that's Papa. She goes, what's Papa doing? <laughs> Papa's preaching. I want to preach. <laughs> she had no idea what she was saying. But you know what? Just that alone, knowing that they're growing up in church, knowing 
that someday I may get to baptize my grandchildren. What an honor it would be. And in closing, folks, I just want you to know, life is so precious. Life is so precious. Never take it for granted. Every gift, it is a gift from God. Then verse 5, happy is the man who has a quiver full of them. And again, how many of y'all have? That's between you and the Lord. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you for, Lord, just life. God, I thank you uh, just for these babies that were dedicated today. I thank you for their parents and the grandparents. And God, I pray that all of us would re realize we have a responsibility. God, we need to take care of these children. We need to love these children. We need to uh, support these children. We need to support the ministries of our children. And God, I just thank you for parenthood. And God, I pray again uh, for those who can't have children, Lord, I pray that they would just seriously consider adopting because every child is special to God. And God, I pray if there's one here today that doesn't know you, Lord, I pray that today would be their day of salvation. God, if there's one here today that needs to rededicate their life, that they would do that or follow the Lord in baptism. You've talked to them about being baptized. God, I pray they would do it today. And God, if others may need to join this church, God, we know who we are. We are Bible-believing. Bible preaching, God fearing, God loving people. And God, I thank you for this church. I thank you for the investment that we put in our children. And so, God, this is your invitation. This is your time. And God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for life. God, would you just speak to us today? Speak to us through your invitation for your time. And God, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come? We thank you for joining us this morning at Rye Hill Baptist Church. And may God richly bless you.